So within page one curator, you start off in the editor window, and this is a very rich text editing window that offers a whole variety of options to stylize your text um, and ensure that it's dynamic and captures the eye. And then what you can do is set up your blogs, your complete blog empire um, in the tool so that you can remotely post to any of your blogs at any one time. And all the posts that you make are also tracked so that you can keep an eye on them um, and indeed you can even re-edit them from within the editor. Then within the feeds tab you can add groups of feeds or your favorite sites um, that you like to curate content from on a regular basis and you can either add them in individually or you can import the group of them as what's called an OPML file which you can e export from Google Reader. So let's just take a look at a typical life cycle of curating a post using this product. So from the main screen, let's create a post about uh, the mini, the mini John Cooper. So the best way to start is using something called Keyword Explorer. And this will query all the keywords around your seed keyword in an effort for you to find the long tail keywords for each post. And you can do that by searching um, either using suggested keywords. So this is what Google is suggesting. Um, that most people are searching on or you can actually ask it to search alphabetically where it will search for the whole list of all the types of keywords that stem from the one you type in here and you can also ask it to search over Google or Amazon to find more buyer orientated words and all you do is type in your keyword there and click on search and straight away all your keywords come back with um, different volume parameters and so um, what you can do then is just click on the, the one you want to use as the title and perhaps um, a couple of other keywords that you might want to include within your post so that you have everything ready for you as you're curating. So once you've done that you click on use selection and you can see straight away that the title has already gone in there and I'll just put a capital letter at the front and, um, and that's already now um, for me to start and the keywords that I select as a secondary it's stored in my clipboard so that I can use them later in my article if I want to reference them in a way to orientate my post to be more keyword orientated so next thing let's go and get some actual content so I can search over all my articles from my feeds or videos images Twitter feeds Google blog search or Google news search so let's start with Google blog search so I'd simply type in my keyword and it comes back with the latest posts that have been created um, around that keyword so straight away I can see that there seems to be a new John Cooper mini released and what I can do is simply select that and drill further to look at the actual content on the web page to check that it's relevant it's interesting and it's a good authoritative source to use so this seems like a good article and then what I can do is literally highlight the whole article like that, click insert selected content and then use it and it pastes the whole article or the article that the content that I've selected into the editor. So then what I'd want to do is introduce that uh, content and so I've just, I'll just write some introductory content of my own. So literally I've just heard that there's a new updated version coming out um, that has the Grand Prix style gear shift. And then I'll reference where I got the, the article from. But more importantly, Curator will actually put automatically the link of where the content came from with the title keyword. And this is important for curation because you must reference the original source of the content. And then what I'll do, I think I'll just stylize it a little bit by putting that curate, that copied content, I'll put it in what's called block quotes, which tells the reader that this isn't actually my writing, this is someone else's writing, uh, but I've you know copied it. So then I've introduced my uh, article, and what I can do then is let's let's liven it up with perhaps an image. So what I can do is search over images, click on search again, 
and I'll type in my keyword and back come a whole load of, load of images um, that are from Flickr that are correctly licensed for you to use in your post. So this is the one I'm talking about, the Mini John Cooper, um, and I can literally click on that and I can choose whether to post that into my editor using a caption um, or leave, leave out the caption but put a standard attribution reference to that image. So for example I'll click on use selected image and you can see it's put the image in there. Um, it's also put in the attribution which is very important so it tells me where I've got it from and that link there will go back to the, the author or photographer of the image so I'm correctly following all the, the generally accepted guidelines around curation. And then what I can do is I'll actually just take that image because it looks a bit silly on its own like that and I will align it to the right of my article and maybe just put a bit of spacing around it so it doesn't look all cramped up like that. Okay, and now you can see how the article is beginning to come together. What I think I'll also do is just move the attribution out of the way of the introduction and I'll just put it at the end here and maybe I'll just put that in Alex up some space and so that's all ready to go then what I think I'll do is liven it up um, a bit with uh, a video so what I'll do is I'll summarize this content here and let's go and have a look at a video so I'll just put a closing bit here and then I'll click search on videos and what I can do here is I can choose to search YouTube um, using different sorting categories either by view count or, or rating um, so that I know that the ones that come at the top are most likely the most interesting ones and first of all what comes back is a whole variety of thumbnails and then if you see something that uh, looks interesting so this is for example an insane attempt at human flight I can click on it and I can actually then preview the YouTube video. Okay, that's quite loud. Um, so let's assume that I want to use that. Then I literally click Use Selected Video and it puts it in what's called an iframe within the editor. So that's already now for being posted out to my blog. Finally, um, what I'll do is I'll just put some content around that. So I can just introduce that video. And um, just to fully finish the, the demo, I'll just show you um, perhaps a, a Twitter search where you can do the same thing. So now it's searching over the Twitter um, timeline for anything that mentions those same keywords. And what happens is, let's say it's found one here, um, it brings out the description of the tweet. And if there's any links, in the tweet then what you can do is open it again to see what the content looks like okay um, so here here is the content of that particular tweet so in this case I won't actually use that but maybe I will just insert that uh, tweet into the post okay so there we go so that's just actually the tweet and it's posted in the correct format for showing up correctly on uh, most blogs so at the end there, um, I, that's my post curated, ready to go. What I can also do before I actually publish is I can actually put the meta description here. And this is the snippet that obviously shows when you are searching Google. And it's important that this is interesting um, because this is what will tell the reader to actually click through to your site when they see it appear in the search results. Okay, so here's my uh, whole post, all done, keyword optimized. Um, I'll just make that title a little bit more interesting. So Mini John Cooper works 0 to 60 um, with paddle shifts. And then all I need to do then is select where I want to publish that. So I'll publish it to my second hand Mini's blog and I'll publish it into the news category. And I can literally just click publish and off that goes and there it is 
published and if I double click on that then it will actually open up the blog for me and there is my content published with the correct title with the image nicely in there with the correct attribution there's my block quoted copied text there's my summarized part of the, the content and there's my introduction to the video that I pasted in and the tweet that I inserted as well and you can see the tweet is actually correctly formatted and quite nice and encourages a follow for that um, Twitter user so I think you can see now that is quite a powerful tool for creating dynamic and interesting blog posts using Page One Curator.